welcome to the release day b-sides this is episode one we're taking a bit of a shorter approach to speaking with musicians and joining me today is dave grohl uh who is joining me all the way i'm just kidding that'd be that'd be cool yeah i've got a uh, new movie to promote it's a horror (laughs) movie uh we went into a house and decided to record an album yeah, no. Returning guest Alex Southey. Uh, you know, you you've you've grown the hair even longer, man. You got a you got you got a great Dave Grohl look going on for you, minus the gray hair. I should say that. Not a, not yeah, no gray. Going That's on. coming in. Trust me. Yeah, <laughs> it was probably all the music in. you're you're writing it's... and releasing, dude. Because you guys, you're you're on a bit of a tear. Yeah, probably. You're on a bit of a tear yeah. right now. You've just released uh, an EP, My Nights on the Island. Well, back in September, I guess. But it's yeah. your latest project. Yeah. And uh, man, yeah. this was this was cool. I really I really enjoyed listening to this. This is like, this is your music. This is very much like when you start singing. We know it's Alex Southey, but you did something really different with this album. First, let's let's talk about mm-hmm. the EP. Where was this? Uh, where did this Where did this come from? And, and what what brought it to life? Yeah, well, um, the EP was basically just coming from being inside all the time and. It was the beginning of the pandemic or or leading into the pandemic anyway. And um, it just kind of felt like the time to make a project that I didn't need to worry about necessarily if it was actually going to see the light of day. It was just kind of a personal thing. And then over time, it became something that I thought would be interesting to release because I made it initially without the intention to release it kind of. Yeah, it's it's a it's a great it's a it's a great sort of continuation though you know it's like it's not exactly what and mm-hmm. the country stirred was but like i said like you know it's you know it's you even just within the atmosphere of of the music and kind of the, the throughout the, the songs on this and you kind of experimented with what the mellotron or something like that through through this project can you explain to me what a mellotron is <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, an actual Mellotron is like a a um, keyboard like machine, in except it's more it's like an analog keyboard. Where now in our keyboards you have like a chip or whatever that has all the information on it that gives you the different types of things. A Mellotron actually had working tape that would spin when you pressed a key on the keyboard type thing. And so it would only have samples that went for like 10 seconds or Mm. at at most. So if you listen to old Mellotron recordings, like if they're going on longer than that, it's because they like piece them together as because normally if you just hit it, it will stop. There's no going on forever. So anyway, that's just an example of how they are on tape and limited in that way. But I just like the sound of them there. It's kind of, um, I mean, it's been used in all different types of music, I guess, but I just started becoming really interested in it because when I started recording music, I wanted good quality string sounds and I kept not being able to get them. (laughs) And so actually going the other way and playing with on purpose artificial strings weirdly made it lock in and make more sense. And then by the time this EP came around, I felt so comfortable writing arrangements with Mellotron that... It, it, I knew it would blanket the entire EP. And you've seen some pretty good success radio wise with this release as well. Like, was this, are you seeing more sort of reception to this than you, than your your album and the country stirred? Yeah, the, the specifically one college university just really took a liking to it and kept it on there for like five to seven weeks in the top five. It's awesome. Um, and that was months after it was released. It was so out of nowhere where I guess they just picked it up and they were like, oh, this is actually pretty decent two months after the fact. But I appreciated it. It was like a great little gift every Wednesday to see the earshot chart. Totally. Um, but I can't exactly tell you what I did differently. Like this was after the PR blast and everything. So I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Someone just found it. Sometimes it's lucky. Well, it's it, totally man. And, and that's, it's awesome. It's a, it's a great, I think tidbit as well. And did you submit your music through earshot? Is that how it was discovered? Because people can go to earshot distro and it's distributed to different radio stations and they can take yeah. a listen and pick your music. Yeah. It's interesting the way earshot works. Like sometimes I'll talk to a campus radio station on, over email and they'll say, 
is your music on earshot? And then they pull it from there. For, for sure. No, I think I think it just helps, right? Because if it's on that platform, like that's where radio people are going. It's not an unsolicited email, right? It's on a platform that is meant specifically. Yeah, ex- exactly. It's like it, you know that if you're on there, you are giving yourself the chance that like that it's uh, going to be picked up. If you're not on there, I feel like there's a you're doing you're depriving yourself of a huge chance. Does it make you question everything you've been doing as a musician when something so different like My Nights on the Island is sort of discovered this way? Not that And the Country Stirred wasn't discovered in, you know, by radio or, or, you know, industry people, but obviously this response from this EP, they kind of make you go, is this the direction I should be going in? Definitely not that. Good. Definitely not that. If I think that if I was just like totally a slave to what was apparently the most popular thing that I put out, then that would be really sad. Uh, I would not enjoy what I was doing. The whole reason My Nights on the Island was put out is because it wasn't what I was doing. Like, that's the irony. But then you can't just walk backwards and hope you keep falling into these great things. So it's a, you still need to like have a plan. And so... I don't know. The next bit of music that I'm putting out is uh, not folk and it's not whatever you would call My Nights on the Island, which is like, I guess, a bit, mix of electronic with folk or something. Um, it's more like indie rock, like alt rock or whatever. F- hence the Dave Grohl hair, I guess. Uh, so at my point, at, my point in saying that is I'm continuing to keep things moving because first and foremost it needs to interest me otherwise like why am i doing it so my nights on the island uh the latest ep but you're far from done recording as you mentioned you're kind of going into this indie rock alt rock sort of (laughs) phase what's happening right now what are you working on yeah i do too money and like splitting up the recording of what will be an album um and we got in and did the first like 40 percent of the basic tracks so let's say that's like drums that's like everything except lead vocals and overdubs um so we're we're in the middle of that now which is which is awesome like i'm very excited it's my first time in a huge legit studio and i'm working with alex gamble who has worked on other well-known much more well-known bands like always and fucked up and the rio statics and stuff like that so i feel like i'm in good hands um and we just work we work really well together it's a little bit of a he has more experience as a recording and mixing engineer than as a producer so he and i are sort of both spearheading that and then he's i'm i don't know anything about recording engineering or anything like that so he's definitely doing all that but it just feels good to sort of like feel like there's growth underneath Mm -hmm. you yeah you know well this is wicked man again your your ep my nights on the island available released uh what september 17th yep and uh our album medicine at midnight is coming out uh (laughs) yeah you can stay tuned (laughs) no (laughs) yeah that's great man well hey yeah dude this was great again (laughs) thanks for uh thanks for joining me on uh on this this new release day b-sides to uh to chat about your ep my nights on the island thank you very much You can discover more podcast episodes as well as our limited video series on our website, www.releasedayseries.com. And if you'd like to support the show, we've added that option to the website as well. Send us a dollar, three dollars, five dollars, whatever you'd like. Any support helps. But most importantly, we appreciate you listening and sharing the podcast. Mm